Hello and welcome to this Automators video where I am going to show you my example editorial calendar base and most importantly how to interact with Airtable through shortcuts on iOS. So this is my sample editorial calendar base. There will be a link in the notes of the video where you can get a hold of this. And it's very simple, it just has uh, one table right here called content. You can add posts, so I'm going to add one about the timer relaunch. You can add notes uh, if you want to. Uh, I've specified a type, so I can do all sorts of things here. So this will be a software review. You say the date, and this is a date column, so you've got a date picker. And then you've got a state, which can be an idea, a draft, or post-it. So let's mark this one as an idea. So now we have a base and we've got some content in it. So now we've got a base and we've got some content in it, we can look at the Airtable API documentation to see what it looks like. This is the Airtable API documentation. And as you can see, it says right here that it's for my sample editorial calendar and you can actually choose a bunch of different bases. Um, and this means that this is tailored exactly to your Airtable base, which means that the examples that they've got here, you don't have to try and figure anything out. You can just know that this is what it is. So over here on the left, we've got introduction, we've got rate limits, authentication. I'm going to show you how to do the authentication so you don't need to read that. What you will need to look at is your different tables and all of these will have the name of the table followed by the word table. And to start with, it will walk through the fields and it will tell you what type each field is. So if it's a single select, for example, then that means that it's an array um, and dates uh, and text, for example. And what we want to do is we want to create a record. So let's click on this and look at the example. You might be looking at this going, okay, I don't know what all this means. That's okay, you don't need to know what all this means. The important information is here. So we've got a post, and that means that the kind of uh, URL, get contents of URL that we do in shortcuts is going to be a post. And then over here we have our data. And if we look at this, this is a dictionary as far as shortcuts is concerned. And so we've got a dictionary and it's got a key called fields and fields is a dictionary and it's got a title, a type, a date and a status. Great, so let's use this. I'm going to walk you through from a completely blank shortcut so that we can build one that's going to integrate with Airtable. So in this case, because we are talking about blog posts, we are going to need a title. So let's ask for input and call that blog title. Um, so that when this runs, we know what we're putting in which field. And we probably want to add some notes as well. So let's just add those as well. Now we need an API key. Now I store all of my API keys in files, which means that I won't accidentally share them with anybody on the internet when I'm doing a screencast. So I'm just going to get the file and get the, my API key out of that file. You may want to just put your API key into the shortcut. You can do that as well. Now we need a URL and the URL is going to be from the documentation in Airtable. And so all we need to do is copy that and then you can paste it in right here. And I'm missing a T at the end from where I copied it. Now we need to get the contents of the URL. And this is where things really ha start happening. So we want to make this advanced and because we're creating, we're going to do a post. Okay, so first thing we need is our headers and this is going to be authorization. And we need to type the word bearer with a capital B and add a space. And then we want our API key, which in my case is this file um, because it's the contents of the file. Now our request body is a JSON. This is right. And we need to make a dictionary. Okay. And our dictionary, if you remember from the other uh, side a moment ago, is called fields. And then inside of this, we have our information. So to start with, we've got our title and then we are going to use a magic variable and just scroll up and grab our title. And we can rename this as well because that's the brilliance of magic variables. Now we need to add some notes and this is called notes, surprisingly enough, because I do very literal naming. And again, we're going to grab that magic variable and 
pop back in here and rename it. And the last thing we want to do is we want to specify that uh, this is an idea. So an our idea is a single select field. It could also be a multi select field, but this is going to be a string because it's a single select. And so this means that I can just do text, which is status. And I'm just going to type the word idea in here because whenever I have a new blog post idea, as it's called, I'm going to just give, call it an idea and it doesn't need to be a draft or anything else. So let's run this and it's going to ask me for my title. This is a great blog post title, I have to say. And look at these wonderful notes. So we do this and then get contents of the URL. And as you can see, I've got some information down here. Let's just zoom in and look at that. So what this has done is it's returned an ID and a created time, which is funnily enough, the time now. And then it's returned the information that I sent to it. And now if we look at our Airtable base, you can see actually this has been added right here. So we've got our great blog post title, wonderful notes. We haven't specified a type or a date that you can do that as well. And our status is set to idea. And that's all there is to it. You can download the shortcut for this, which will be exactly as I've shown it here. Um, and you can also copy this Airtable base to yourself, uh, to your own Airtable account, so that you can give this a full play. Trust me, the Airtable documentation is not that hard and you will do just fine with it. Thanks for watching.